Hey, what is going on everyone? In this video, what I'd like to do is show you guys how to make a tic-tac-toe app. So when you first load up this application that we'll be making, you'll be presented with this home screen. We can click the play button and then you have to type in two names. So I'll type in Jason and for player two, I'll just call him Bobby. We can close this down and then click the submit names button. So once you click that submit button, you'll then be presented with the tic-tac-toe board along with whoever's turn it happens to be. So I could come in here and just start placing in pieces until we have a winner. And then you'll see once we do have a winner, it says Jason won or whoever happened to win along with the winning line. And then you'll see just below our tic-tac-toe board, we have two new buttons that appeared. So if we click the play again button, we'll be able to play the tic-tac-toe game again. So let's just keep going until we have another winner. But we can also click the home button as well, which will take us back to our home screen. So if this seems like something you'd like to make, and especially if you're new to app development, you're gonna learn a whole bunch in this series if you follow along with me. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you know when I upload the next video in this tic-tac-toe series. All right, so the first thing we gotta do is set up our project. I'm gonna create a new empty activity. We're gonna click the next button, and then I'm gonna call our application tic-tac-toe. And then I'm going to keep all the same defaults here, but make sure your language is selected as Java and not Kotlin. So then we're going to click finish and Android Studio should create the project for us. And once it's finally created, you should have two files open, your main activity.java file along with the activity main.xml file. Right now, what I want to do is create that home screen that we saw. So if we come over to the far right, we can click the design tab, click on this hello world, and we're going to delete it. Then what I want to do is drag in two views, a text view, along with a button view. Now this text view is gonna display tic-tac-toe and our button is gonna be that play button that takes us to the enters name page. So to set these two views up, the first thing we're gonna to have to do is add in some constraints. So if you come over to the component tree, you can see that the first error that we have is this view is not constrained. So to add in these constraints, we can click on the first view that we placed in the text view and you'll see these buttons place up all along the sides of it. So if we click this first button, you should get this arrow that pops out of it. We can drag it over to the far left and it should snap just along the side of the display. And then we can click the other bubble and drag it over to the far right and then drag this top bubble to the top of the screen here. Then what I wanna do is constraint this button just below our text view and then we're gonna add left and right constraints to our button as well. And then since these two views are sandwiched together, we could drag them apart a little bit so we can drag it just a little bit below. And then I don't want this flush with the top of our screen. So I'm gonna drag this one a little bit lower as well. And now I think I have our views positioned in a way that I like, but you can rearrange it however you want. Now, if we come over to the far right hand corner, we can click the split button to see the XML code associated with our design. And if you scroll down, you can see that we have our text attributes highlighted in yellow. Now, the reason for this is because Android Studio by default will place in a hard coded string. Now, Android Studio wants you to go in and replace this with a string resource. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. So if you come over to the far left panel, you can expand your resource folder, expand the values folder within there, and then double click strings.xml. Now within here, we're gonna add in two new strings. So to do that, we're gonna use our string tag. So type in string and we have to give it a name. I'm gonna call this home title. So this is gonna be for our text view that's gonna display tic-tac-toe. And then close this off and within these tags, I'm just gonna type in tic-tac-toe, but you could type in whatever you want. This is just what I want the title to be of the home screen. And then just below this, I'm gonna create a string for the button. So we're gonna type in the string tag again, and then I'm gonna type in play button. Then within these tags, I'm just gonna type in play. So now that we have these two strings set up, let's come back over to our activity main.xml file and actually write some code to reference those strings. So if we look at our text view, we can type in at string forward slash home title. And then if you take a look over to the right, you can see that the text was changed to tic-tac-toe. And we can do the same thing for our button. So we could go at string forward slash play button. And you'll see that the word button was replaced with the word play. Now, for the most part, we have both of our views set up. We could work with these, but they're looking a little rough. So I think we could change the style up just a little bit to make them look more appealing. So if we come over to the right, we could click our design tab. Let's first edit our text view here. This will be the easiest one. So click it, come over to the attributes panel, and we're looking for the common attributes section. With it here, you can edit the text as if you were in like Word. So we have the text size here, change it to, I'm gonna go with like 36 SP. You can make the text bold. 
And then I'm gonna change the color to something like this deep gray here, maybe a little bit lighter. And then that should be good for our text view here. Now, the next thing that I'd like to do is change the style of our button. To do this, we're gonna to need to create a drawable resource folder. So if we come over to the far left panel again, in our resources folder, we need to expand our drawable folder. If you right click on this, hover over new, you can scroll down to the drawable resource file, click that, and we're gonna give it a name of blue button. Hit enter, and then you'll be presented with the new bluebutton.xml file. And then within here, we're gonna place in a new item. So we're gonna use the item tag, close this off, and this item is gonna be a shape. So we're gonna type in shape, close this one off, and within this shape tag, we're gonna give it an attribute of Android, colon, shape, and we're gonna define this shape as a rectangle. Now within the shape tag, what I wanna do is define a solid background. So we can type in solid, and then within the solid tag, we can type in Android, color, and define a color for it. Now, I already have one picked out. I'm just gonna paste it in. And then once we close this tag, we can come over to the design, and you'll see we have this nice blue rectangle. So to make this look a little bit nicer, we can round off the corners of our rectangle by using the corners tag. So I'm gonna type in corners, Android radius, and I'm gonna give it a radius of 100 dp. I'm sure that'll look pretty good. So come back over and you'll see our corners have a nice radius applied to them. And then one last thing that I'd like to add is a stroke around our button. So we can type in stroke, and then all we have to do is define a color for the stroke. I'm gonna give it a color of black, and then I'm gonna define one more attribute, which is the width. And I'm gonna give it a value of 2 dp. Close this tag off, and if we come over to our preview, you can kind of see the stroke that was applied to our button background, but it's kind of faint. You'll see it more when we come back over to the activity main.xml file and actually apply it to our button. So to apply this background to our button, we're gonna come over to the far right, click the split button, come down to our button tag here, and all we have to do is change the background of our button. So we're gonna type in Android colon background, and then we just have to reference that drawable resource file that we just created by typing in at drawable, and then we're looking for the blue button resource. Hit enter, and then if you come over to the design, you'll see that the resource wasn't applied correctly. Now, this is because of the new update. Android Studio is using Material Design as their default theme, so we need to come in and modify a few things about that theme. If we come back over to the far left panel, we can come down into our resources folder, and then expand the values folder, and within the themes, we're looking for the themes.xml, and the themes.xml, but the night theme open up both of these files and we're gonna need to change one thing about them. We're gonna need to change the parent attribute right here. So if we remove this, we could type in theme and we're looking for this first option right here, theme, app compact, light, no action bar. Hit enter, but we're gonna need to apply this to the other theme as well, the night one. So I'm gonna copy and paste this, go over to that XML file and paste that same thing in again. Now, if we close both of these, we can come back over to our activity main.xml and you'll see our play button now looks like the drawable resource file that we just created. Now, what I'd like to do is kind of edit our text a little bit and make our button a little bit wider. So to do that, we can come up to our layout width and I'm gonna give it a value of, let's try 125. And then we can click our button, come over to the design button in the far right and then come over to the attributes panel and we can change the text a little bit and then give it a value of, let's try 24 SP. That looks a little bit too big. Let's try 20 SP. Okay, that looks fine. That should be good enough for this video. Now, the last thing we have to do for our homepage is change the background from this white to this nice brown color that I found on the internet. Now, if you are looking for nice colors for your apps, I would recommend going over to Material Design's page and here they have a bunch of color palettes that you can pick from. And I ended up using this color right here, this D7CCC8. So I'm gonna copy this, we'll close this down, and then we're gonna come back over to the far right, click the split button, scroll all the way up, and within our constraint layout tag, we're gonna define a background for it. So we could type in Android, colon background, and then we're just gonna paste in that value here. And then you can take a look at our background and it swapped over to that nice brown color. Now it's looking like we're off to a pretty great start. What I'd like to do now is come up to the far right and we're gonna click this play button to run our app on an emulator. Now we're gonna let this load up and you'll see that we have our homepage and if we click our play button, nothing happens. So let's start adding some functionality to our button. But before we go ahead and do that, what we're gonna need to do is create the next page in our app. That was the page where we started typing in all the users' names. So if we come over to the far left, we can expand every folder within this Java folder here, right click on the last one, we're gonna go over to new, and then scroll all the way down to activity, 
and then we're looking for this empty activity option right here. Click that, and then you'll be presented with this new screen. Now I'm gonna call this activity player setup, and then I'm gonna rename this XML activity to player setup, and then we're gonna come down and click finish. So once you click the finish button, Android Studio is gonna create a new Java file and a new XML file. This is our new player setup.java file, and this is the player setup.xml file, and you can see that it's entirely blank. So what I'd like to do is kind of carry the same theme over from our first activity over to this one. So let's go over and we can copy and paste this background applied to our constraint layout. And I want to do the same thing in our player setup.xml file. So if we come over to the far right again, we can click the split button. And then within this tag here, we can just paste that in. And now we'll have the same background on both of our activities. The next thing that I'd like to do is just look at our design and place in a few more views. The first view that I'd like to place in is the text view to notify the user about what they have to do on this activity. Then what I'd like to do is drag in two more views. These are gonna act as labels for where the user types in their name. So there's one and here's two. And now if we come over to the palette, we can click the text button and we're looking for the plain text option. We're gonna drag in two of these. This is the view that's allowing the user to type in their name. So here's one and we're gonna need one more. And then finally, we're gonna come back over to common in our palette and then drag in one more button. So now that we have all these views placed in, like from the beginning of this video, we're gonna to have to add constraints to all of our views. So let's start at the top and we can work our way down. I'm gonna add a constraint to the left and right, to the top. Now this view right here, I'm gonna give it a constraint to the far left of the plain text view and then to the top of the plain text view. So it snaps to this top left-hand corner here. And I'm gonna do the same thing for this one as well. And now let's give some constraints for the plain text view. So left, right, and we'll constrain it to the bottom of this top text view here. And we'll do the same thing for this other text field area. Constraint this one just below this one here. And then our button will be constrained to the left, right, and then right below this text field here. So let's drag this one just a little bit down, drag this one down. So we have some spacing. And then finally we could drag this one away from the top and now it looks like we have a pretty decent looking activity that allows our user to type in their name, but I'd like to change it up just a little bit. So let's come over to the top text view and let's change the text size from 14 SP to 36. And then let's make it bold. And then we can come down and we can apply a new drawable resource file to our button. So if we come back over to the far left, we can right click on our drawable folder, click new drawable resource file, and I'm gonna call this one red button. Hit enter, and to save time, we can double click our blue button.xml, click Control A, Control C, and we're just gonna paste in the same code here, except we're gonna just change it from blue to red. Now, again, I already have a color picked out for our red button, so I'm gonna paste in this one right here, and if you take a look at our design, we have this nice salmon looking color. So let's close this file. We can come back to our player setup.xml file, click on our button, we can look at the XML associated with our button by scrolling down and looking for the button tag. And then we can apply that drawable to our button's background by typing in Android colon background and then at drawable and we're looking for red button. And then let's give it a width of like 125 DP. And now what I wanna do is define some new strings for our player setup activity. So if we come back over to the far left panel, we can come into our resources file, values, strings.xml, and then that should open up our strings.xml file and we can define a few more strings. So I went ahead and defined five new strings, a player setup title, two labels, a name for our submit button, and a name hint. And I'll explain more what that string is used for once we get to it. So let's come back over to the player setup.xml file and I'm gonna go through and apply the strings the same way that we've been doing it in this video. So I'll be back. Okay, so now this is where the name hint string is gonna come into play. So in our edit text, Android defines by default a text value to be displayed within there. Now when the user goes ahead and clicks on that view, they're gonna actually have to remove whatever string value you place in there. It's not just gonna disappear automatically when they click on it. So we need to change this from Android text to Android hint. So if we type in Android colon hint, and then we can reference that string in our strings.xml file. So this name hint one right here, I could type in at string and then come down to name hint. And then if we only apply this to the first edit text, you could come over to the design and see the effect that it has. So this one's kind of grayed out and this one's solid black. So when you click on this one, 
enter your name will disappear and the user will be able to start from an empty string. But this one, the user will start from a string of name. So this is why we're gonna swap over to Android Hint instead of using Android Text. So I'm gonna copy and paste that line, paste it in right here. And then finally, I'm gonna change the string for our button. Okay, so now that I have all the views on this page referencing the correct strings in our strings.xml file, what I wanna do is stylize a bit of the text. So instead of having player one be a light gray color, let's make it red. So we can click this, come over to the attributes panel, and then where it says text color, you can click this, and I'm just gonna drag it over to red. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for player two, but instead of having it be red, I'm gonna have it be blue. This, and then I guess, we're just gonna type in the hex value for blue. And then we can come back over to a design, and you can see that the text colors have changed. Now let's change up our button a little bit. Let's make it a little bit wider. I think instead of 125, we should make it 150. Yeah, that looks much better. All right, so it looks like this activity is done. I think it's looking pretty good actually. So the next thing we have to do is write some code. So when we press the play button on our main activity, it takes us over to our player setup activity. So to do that, we're gonna come over to the main activity.java file, and then just below our onCreate method, this one right here, we're gonna create our own public method. So we're gonna type in public void, and then I'm gonna call it play button, click, and then within here, we're gonna take in a view and I'm just gonna call it view, close this off. And then within here, we're gonna to need to use the intent class. So I'm gonna go intent, not integer, intent. And I'm just gonna call it intent. We're gonna create a new intent. So within here, we're gonna reference the context. So I'm gonna type in this. Then in the next argument, what we have to place in is the activity that we want to load up. So in our case, it's the player setup activity. So I'm gonna type in player setup.class and then end this statement. Then all we have to do below this is type in start activity and then pass in our intent. So now when this method is executed, it should load up this activity right here. But we have to link this method up to our play button right here. So to do that, click the play button, come over to the attributes panel, and we're looking for the on click slot right here. It's contained within our common attributes. Click this drop down, and since we made it a public method, you should be able to see it right here. Click it, and now if we come over to the main activity.java file, it should turn from a light gray to a yellow color, letting us know that this method has been assigned. So now when we click that button, this code right here should be executed, allowing us to load up the enter your name activity. So let's come up to the far right, and we can click the play button to run our emulator and see if this actually works. So this loads up, we can click the play button, and it takes us over to the new activity that we just created. Now, looking at this, I really don't like it. This is too big of a gap, and I think we should raise our title up a little bit more. So I'm gonna close out of this and raise our title up, and then decrease the gap between this, and then maybe increase the gap between our button. All right, so let's come up to the top right-hand corner, and I wanna see what the spacing looks like when we run the app on the emulator. So let this load up. And now that we have our app loaded up, we can click the play button to see what the next activity looks like. And I think this looks a lot better. So I'm gonna go with this spacing for our second activity. And I think we should end the video here. It's starting to get pretty long. So if you guys have any questions or if you're having trouble getting something to work, leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.